During the last ice age, lions covered an enormous geographical range. Not only did they inhabit Africa and Asia like they do today, but they were also found in Europe and North America. The lions living in North America were called American lions. Panthera Leo Atrox There is debate regarding the ancestral lineage of the American lions. Genetic analysis of their fossils suggests that they evolved from the Eurasian cave lions that crossed the Beringia land bridge into North America. Morphological characteristics from the skull and dentistry reveal that the American lion was more closely related to the African lion and tiger than it was to the jaguar. The American lion diverged from Eurasian cave lions about 340,000 years ago. It later evolved into the modern jaguar, entering South America by the late Pleistocene. The American lion became extinct approximately 12,000 years ago, along with the mass extinction of the megafauna. These include prey species such as the woolly mammoth and mastodon. It is still unclear exactly why so many animals became extinct towards the end of the last ice age. Most scientists accept that it was a combination of both dramatic climate change and the competition with early humans. Although large predatory species such as the American lion and the saber-toothed cats may not have directly competed with humans, there may have been increased competition for their prey. We know from fossil records that this extinct lion was larger than today's Asian and African lions. It stood at 4 feet tall and 8 feet long. It had long legs with retractable claws. We also know from fossil evidence that American lions were a formidable predator that roamed during the Pleistocene epoch. But the question is, could they survive today? In order to answer this question, we need to look at a number of factors that determine a species' survivability. These include, but are not limited to, habitat, prey availability, competition, and climate. Firstly, habitat. No fossils of American lions have been found where boreal forests dominated the landscape during the Pleistocene. From this, paleontologists conclude that American lions lived almost exclusively in open grasslands. They lived and hunted in open plains and often dragged their prey back to rocky dens. In current day America, the Great Plains found west of the Mississippi River and east of the Rocky Mountains would provide a similar habitat for the lions. But would this be big enough for American lions to roam? The home range of American lions is not known, but in African lions, it varies enormously. It has been shown to be as little as 25 kilometers squared and as much as 2,000 kilometers squared. The size of a carnivore's range is determined by a trade-off between energy expenditure used in maintaining a territory and food availability. The Great Plains have the potential to provide food for American lions. However, what was once a vast landscape containing roaming herds of bison and other herbivores has now become fragmented with agricultural land. Some of the national parks and reserves could also provide a suitable habitat for these large carnivores, but the number of these apex predators and availability of prey would have to be carefully managed, as they are in many African reserves. There are certainly vast areas of wilderness in North America today that could provide habitat for American lions. Whether those areas would be considered enough for the lion's home range is questionable. As the human population expands and anthropogenic activities put increasing pressure on the environment, national parks and reserves may provide the only habitat suitable for these giant prehistoric cats. Secondly, prey availability needs to be considered. Evidence suggests that American lions hunted very large prey, such as young mammoths, giant ground sloths, and bison. Some scientists have concluded from the fossils found in Ranchero La Brea tar pits that American lions were social animals. They hunted in prides, like their African relatives. This has been concluded from the high number of young male specimens found in the tar pits and the physiology of the limbs. These findings point towards group hunting and group behavior. Today, herbivores in North America such as bison, moose, elk, and deer could be considered prey for American lions. Once widespread across America and numbering in the millions, bisons are now only found in national parks, state parks, and reserves. There are an estimated 31,000 remaining in America, with the only truly wild bison found in Yellowstone National Park. 
These are thought to be descended from those of the Pleistocene era. Although the introduction of American lions would put considerable strain on the American bison populations, there would likely be enough smaller species of prey available. White-tailed deer would be an abundant food source for the lions. They are found in every U.S. state except for Alaska, and there are thought to be between 25 and 30 million. White and black-tailed deer currently fall prey to mountain lions. These cats are not actually lions, but instead pumas. It is debatable whether prey would compete with American lions for habitat and food if they coexisted. This leads on to the third factor that needs to be considered for the American lion survival – competition. In North America, the natural predators of moose and elk are typically wolves, brown bears, and occasionally mountain lions. If American lions were introduced to the area, they would be competing for food with these established predators. Mountain lions require a vast area of wilderness to thrive. Their range is 13 times greater than that of a black bear. They are found in mountains, forests, deserts, and wetlands, anywhere there is shelter and plentiful prey. American lions typically lived in open grasslands. Until recently, it was thought that mountain lions were solitary animals, only coming together to breed and raise young. However, they have been recorded sharing carcasses and are known to have a hierarchy amongst those within the same range. Despite this, they probably wouldn't outcompete American lions for food. The American lions were thought to hunt collectively in prides. They would probably be more effective at making kills than mountain lions. They were larger and able to hunt together, making them able to target larger prey than mountain lions. Perhaps American lions would remain in open grasslands hunting bigger animals, whilst mountain lions would continue to live in their varied habitats, taking down smaller prey. There would be considerable competition for space and prey with other predators already established in North America. However, it is possible that American lions could coexist with these species. In Africa, lions live alongside other predatory species. Leopards, hyenas, wild dogs, and cheetahs are just a few of the carnivorous species living in Africa. Although they each occupy different niches and hunt or scavenge in their own unique ways, they live in close proximity to one another and often feed on the same animals. Populations of the mountain lion have decreased significantly since the 1800s. They have fallen victim to hunting and habitat loss. Due to conflicts with livestock, mountain lions were hunted and almost eradicated from the eastern states. It is plausible that American lions would follow in a similar vein, threatening livestock and struggling with habitat loss. Finally, we need to consider the climate. The climate during the Pleistocene was highly variable. It was characterized by irregular cycles of glacial and interglacial periods. As a result, temperatures fluctuated by as much as 50 degrees Fahrenheit within a few decades. During glacial periods within the Pleistocene, up to 30% of the Earth's surface was covered by glaciers. Ice during these times spread from the Arctic Circle as far south as modern-day Illinois and Missouri. Global temperatures were about 11 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than they are today, and the world was a drier place. Rainfall across the globe was about half of what it is today, and sea levels were lower. The American lion would have been adapted to survive these conditions. Interglacial periods during the Pleistocene were reminiscent of the current climate. This suggests that species from that era could, from a climatic perspective, survive today as well as the megafauna found during the Pleistocene. There were also many familiar species. Brown bears, caribou, and wolves were also roaming North America during the last ice age. Whilst these smaller species survived to the present day, the megafauna, including American lions, died out as the Pleistocene ended and the Earth entered the Age of Man. In conclusion, although there could be enough food and space for American lions to live side by side with modern day predators, there was a reason they did not survive past the Pleistocene. Whether this reason was climate change or overkill from humans, the American lions have had their time and their niche has now been filled. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Time, time, time.